Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltiasGaming.com here with a beginner walkthrough of Veteran Maelstrom Arena. Right now, currently, the Elder Scrolls Online has a double drop vent going on in Maelstrom Arena, Rothgar specifically. I want to walk you through with what I use for my beginner magic build. This is going to contain purple gear primarily, and I have 456 champion points on the European server PC. You're going to want to watch this video if you're trying to beat Maelstrom Arena on Veteran and you don't have all the fancy gear or tons of champion points. I'm going to share the basics with you and how to do it reliably. So I'm playing the Magic Templar. Reason being is it's the easiest for me. Your main spammable here, puncturing sweeps, acts as single target, AoE, and it heals you based on the damage done. It's very, very forgiving, though you have to play in melee range. So I'm gonna have that on as my main spammable, and I'm gonna start executing bosses around 35 to 30% 30 health, and I'm gonna take this Morph Radiant Glory for extra healing. Camel Hunter is gonna be slotted there for increased spell damage via the Fighter's Guild passive, a well with Inner Light as having it on our bar, increasing max magic. Two abilities just slotted to make our front bar easier. Purifying Light's gonna be here, it's a flex spot, but I'm gonna put that on for extra healing. Back bar, Channel Focus for Armor and Resource Sustain, Ritual of Ret for a little bit of healing and also AoE damage, Harness Magic for a shield, Blazing Spear for AoE damage, and then combines well with Wall of Elements, Unstable Wall with the Destro Alt. Very, very simple. The front bar ultimate is going to be Crescent Sweep. This is a very easy loadout and what I recommend for beginners. Withered Hand, Alakir Desert. I don't have False Gods, I don't do Trials on PCEU, but this is a supplemental thing you can run and it's Overland so you can get it any point in the game. It's all Divine's traits, it's not maxed out glyphs, and it's not golded out. I'm going to go with a five piece Mother of Sorrow as well. Divine's, I got a training trait here with purple jewelry, all arcane and spell damage. You can get both of these things in the Overland, Alakir for Withered Hand, Mother of Sorrow for Deshaun, get it right away. And then the weapons, I am going to go with the trainee weapons. The downside of the trainee weapons is it comes in training traits. So you're going to have to retrade it. If you're a brand new player and you can't get the trainee weapons, I'd go with willpower. Trainee can be obtained in the starter zones. Willpower can be obtained in Imperial City or the Dungeon Finder. And both can be obtained on the traders. Very cheap, very reliable. I'm going to go double lightning staff. End game damage, you're going to go fire. But just for the sake of this, it's a lot easier to rip off a fully charged heavy attack with lightning. So that's what I'm going to stick with. This is a high elf. I'm going 64 points into max magicka. And I have a very generous stat pool. A lot of max health, which is very helpful if you don't have a lot of damage. I'm going to go with the Thief Munda Stone and then Clockwork Citrus Filet Food. Very simple build, very simple loadout. Now let's walk you through. I'm going to cut out kind of the slow parts and make sure to include the boss and any relevant tips along the way. And of course, if I die. Round one. Round one in VMA in general is about positioning. So as soon as you come out here, there's going to be a spawn right here. You want to park yourself right on top of it, okay? One, 1,000, two, 1,000, spear, three, and then bar swap, block that and get it down. So a lot of this is just simply memorization. And we're not playing for a super fast score. We don't have pale order or any fancy gear, but that's okay. So as long as you position yourself, you're trying to get one or more mobs down before they can take any actions. When you're playing really high skill level, you can basically get them down before they do anything. And that's kind of what we're aiming to do. So you can see this mob here that I got positioned, it died even when I walked away from it. You're gonna get that by experiencing and playing this over and over and over. You're gonna know how much HP those mobs have, so one or two abilities, and you can move on and reliably know you're gonna kill it. So I got this archer here, got it down, and then we're gonna move to this next one here. And a fire staff will be more single target damage, but this one's just so much easier and user friendly. One, two, and I'm gonna leave this one alone. This one's gonna charge me, and then I get clump them up like this. And I hit puncturing sweeps here, and that's why it's so dang helpful as a magpar. Because I know I can just hit that main spammable and reliably be safe while I'm hitting my ability. Another really easy magic class to do this on is Magic Sork and Magic Nightblade. Both are exceptional at survivability, plus you have range. 
So if you like the range play style and you want something really easy, I go with Magic Sork or Magic Nightblade. Both are great alternatives to the Melee Templar. But I was born to Plar is my favorite. Okay, got one down. The, the Melee is going to come to me. Why that's relevant is leave your ground effect AoEs like Ritual of Ret, Blockade down, and let the Melee come to you with it. So one, two... I'm gonna put that down, see Clan Fear, Melee coming, and see how they just charge right into that. So now we clump them all up, just sweeps them out. And we're close to the boss round here, so you wanna make sure you have a little bit of gas left, especially resource-wise. So I'm gonna rip out a fully charged heavy just to make sure we get everything we need. Delete him. Now we got 500 ultimate, and we're ready for the boss round. So. You're not going to be able to kill it probably in one pull like you normally would with higher DPS. So we're going to try our best. One, two, three, four. And getting the boss round, position right behind him. Make sure to position right behind him. We have Camel Hunter slotted, so that's going to really help if we start critting. So I'm going to tag this one here. I'm not going to reapply my buffs because I don't have enough damage, and it's going to transit over here. As it transits, one, two, three. I'm going to put Purifying Light just to be careful. I'm going to hit a beam. And now Crescent's up. I'm going to hit a Crescent, pull back, and just beam it. So we got it down real simple real easy take your time positioning and memorization are really important on to two round two and this can be a struggle specifically for stamina and or melee so eventually you're going to get these bleed effects on you by getting the spinny things there so we want to avoid the spinny things however we are playing magic so it's very forgiving because we have harness magica our shield and we can basically absorb them so you're kind of doing a little dance here, as you can see me do it here, trying not to hit that. So I got them. See how they're stacking up now? And it really ramps my health down. So you got to make sure to kind of do a dance, be aware of the, where they are. The only thing that's going to kill you here on this guy is the heavy attack. So as long as you can move out of that, it's not going to be a big deal. And it's more of the same. So as you progress on this round and more, you want to know where that Dwarven Spear spawns. Because if you can time it right with a heavy attack and your ground effect AoEs, these two guys will spawn on you, you'll kill them both, and then that spear will have so much damage on it, it'll die right away. That will increase your speed and your survivability, because if things die before they can react or do damage to you, it's a win. So remember where the heavies, I like to call them, the ones with the most HP spawn for them, like this. It's a Centurion here. So I park them there, you see those ads are coming right here. The ground effect just kills him as I walk away. Done. So after this spawn here, we're going to have the boss. And we want to make sure we're away from the boss so it spawns and procs. It's a longer animation. So that's really important to be back here. So final round. One, two, Destro. See how it shoots this thing in the air? That's going to give you a lot more time to deal with it. So hopefully if we have enough damage, you can click close to killing it or absolutely killing it. So when you have actually optimal damage sets on, you can kill that thing. So we're going to kind of hang out here. This is going to take a while since I don't have optimal damage sets. So I'm going to bring it close. I'm going to block and it's going to swap back and forth who has the highest HP. So again, this is going to take a while. But if you have a lot of damage, you can just pull back and actually kill that before it does anything. And I also have 25 stacks of the bleed. So we're really going to need to be cognizant and have our head on a swivel to get rid of these things. Say more of the same, see how it kind of goes around. That's why it's so important to position yourself at the start of this round because you want to avoid that long winded animation. But we're just going to have to deal with it. So we got one, two, spear up. I can eat this one because I have 20,000 HP. And it's going to rotate back. Here we go. Rotate, 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 blockade channel and this one is very tough on sustain because you don't have ads to kill so with our gear sets it's going to be a tough one for sustain so that's why the heavy attack even one that you can't damage them in between is really useful potion soft cooldown i'm going to hit that almost got him down unfortunately i did not ritual of ret purifying light rotate around and you see i'm constantly rotating no this is not pvp but you don't want to get caught in that animation it's lesson learned here you want to pull back and consistently nuke that thing in the longer animation. If you can get one down at the start, this round goes so much faster and is so much easier. Toxic Shock, this is all about the platforms. There's lightning ground effects, bad things when the, light, when the water lights up with lightning. Pretty obvious stuff here. But what you're trying to do is, and what I found really useful is, um, putting Blockade 
on the one you're standing on and then putting a spear on the other one or whatever ability in class you're using like so like right here you can do one and it basically just kills them without any play so you don't even have to turn around and look but what you can do is this spear here blockade ritual ret so then it'll kind of work on killing two of them and you're only damaging one see how we see how we got that down so we got two down this is kind of a mini boss and this one has mini bosses in it and i know it's kind of making you dizzy rotate but when you rotate like that remember camo hunter is on our bar if we don't have that buff when we crit from the flank which is essentially shoulder to shoulder we're going to get extra damage so even though this is pve practice the rotation it will actually matter a little bit purifying light up purifying lights really useful as well because it's going to give us a flood of healing at the feet of the mobs when they die or excuse me when it procs so that's really really good especially if you lack a lot of healing so pale order for magic you can use it that's a mythic you don't have to because you have just such a strong shield so here we're gonna we're gonna apply our buffs one two mini boss i'm gonna use an ultimate here so i'm not saving up my ultimate for anything fancy i'm gonna use it i will give you some advice that little knob there that mini boss it will kind of kind of uh go into a channel but you can't see it because it's in lightning form that has killed me many a times learning that so what i do is i don't mess with it in melee range i just pull out back so i can see what the heck it's doing and then it's more of the same so when it's going to spawn here we're going to go one two three so now we got damage on there we got damage on this one and so i'm going to fully charge heavy and you see how they're kind of already already down like this what happens is um if you have a more damage you can basically kill all three of them instantly by using a blazing spear or if you're on a sork you can use the daedric mines or the mages guild skill all sorts of stuff we're gonna park the three melee here kill them so one two three and that will kill just one outright if you do it like that i'm gonna fully charge heavy here purifying light's gonna go off and you see we killed one two and we really didn't have to do any other mechanics now I'm gonna use my shield because I'm low on health. I'm just gonna keep on shielding. No problem, I'm gonna jump back to my island. I'm gonna use my shield. Okay, I'm gonna put my blockade down. I'm gonna shield again because I'm low. So I'm at 11,000 health. Let's just kill this guy. I don't have to worry about it. There we go. So don't panic. Use your shield and stick to around 23,000 health so you don't have to be flawless when you're actually doing this. Now we have the boss round. And so we're gonna pull the boss to the nearest platform try to get rid of the strangler if you can to start this okay got it down we're gonna pull the boss to the nearest platform it doesn't even have a million health so it'll go down pretty quickly but what we're gonna do is rotate so we don't eat that and then we're gonna drop the ultimate when the ads spawn at a certain hp threshold okay so i'm gonna put purifying up. ads are spawning i'm gonna shield preemptively drop my desto drop ritual and rotate purifying lights up just so i can get a big extra heal 38 percent. so i'm gonna go ahead and start beaming beam 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 and rotate beam and rotate and the the beam along with the other healing from purifying light will be strong enough to heal you through that even with 450 champion points and let me show you right here 458 that beam is that strong on to the next round this is really quite simple on this one um the final boss just transits and moves around so you can't like necessarily park it straight away so your ultimate choice has to be a little bit different so you're kind of roaming around here what will help speed this up is your ground effect aoe's whatever class you're on don't be afraid to throw like one over here like this this thing you don't want to get those uh all around ring around the rosy style so kind of kill them as you can but those are not going to determine when the um round is done these mobs will so those will kind of sporadically uh, spawn around and you'll get overwhelmed if they're not down. But see, I don't want to prioritize it right now. Now I got it down. I got a few seconds until it respawns. So again, ground effects and preemptively starting the round. One, two, three, bar swap. So now the spear comes out. I'm just going to kind of kite here so that thing comes and then bang, it's dead. So it only got one shot off. Now I'm going to rotate around and we should have some casters here. Yep. And I missed the clockwork sentry. So I'm going to have to deal with it shooting out for just a minute. Then it goes down. Here comes another one. I'm going to park right on top of it. So the spear comes out. And the spear will is ranged. So it's not going to come right towards the melee like these other little critters. So park on there. Get her down. And it's just more of the same of this. You got one over here. So we're going to just delete this one. And there's kind of like a mini heavy here. Just park right on top of it. This one will try to heal it. No problem. Just bash it. 
and throw my ground effects down. I look at my six here and I can see there's a spear up. So, doop, got it down. And that's it until the boss round. So save your ultimate, your Destro ult for the boss, the very final boss, because it'll be very, very handy if you have a fully charged ultimate ready to go when the last boss comes up. All right, so last pull before the boss round here. This one can be tricky. It's melee. What you're going to try to do is try to get rid of the two adds and then do a dodge and watch that fully charged heavy attack. It will absolutely kill you if you're not prepared. So you just realize it's going to come out about 10 seconds after the spawn. Okay, we got it down. Now we're going to get the uh, boss round here, and you can do it one of two ways. Drop a Destro at the very beginning and kind of just hit sweeps on it until you, you are uh, parked in position. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to do one, two, and you're going to hang out underneath here best you can. And then after a while, it's going to park down, and you're not going to be able to hang underneath there. So that's what we're going to do is we're just going to sweeps and put purifying life up, get about 50%. And as soon as it goes to park, we're going to reapply our buffs and get out of dodge. So like right here, one, two, three, back up out of dodge. We're at 35% health, so we can kind of just rotate left and right so you don't get caught in those. And then the, pure, the healing enough from the beam is enough to kill it. So if you don't have a whole lot of DPS, that's how you do it. Drop your AOE ground effects to start, park it, back up, and beam it out. Ice round here, and so this seems to be a really point of contention for people. They don't like this round at all. So take your time and remember to shield. That's really what we're doing. And again, try to get one of these mobs down straight away. So your, your goal here is the melee are not that troublesome. It's really the casters that give you a problem. So I'm going to pull back here. So the troll's up. I'm going to do a dodge. Remember, we got plenty of stam, so be liberal with your dodges. It, no problem with dodging because I'm playing a Dunmer, uh, excuse me, High Elf, and I still have around 12,000 um, stamina. So get liberal with that. Like, like right here, I just avoided that um, arrow attack, and I didn't have to shield or take away time from DPS just doing a dodge. Now, this one here, I would recommend using ultimates on the really tough stages and not just waiting for the very final boss. So this uh, character here, you can use an ultimate if you struggle with it. There's a DPS race check here right there and that can help you get through it now you're going to save your ultimate for the ice rounds with the big huge ads those can be really tricky or you can use crescent in between and just whenever you want so we got ogres here they can hit you real hard so we're going to just use crescent sweep um, and or destra alt from here on out Okay, so a trick you can use here on the caster is tab target them or whatever it is on consoles and walk them back. So I'm going to use a shield here, and you'll see I'm going to walk them back. I walked them back so it parks on the ledge. Then you're able to access them. If you just sit back there and it's just completely nuking you at range, it's not going to go well for you. So if you struggle with those casters and the range ones, walk back and park it. So once this one's done, we're close to a Destro Alt. We're going to save it for this last little bit. We're going to come right over to this island here. This is really important to get a good start. As soon as you get down, set up your ground, set up your house. And of course, a troll spawn. So this is going to be real tough. Hopefully it comes to us. It does not. Perfect. All right. So we're going to have to move. I'm going to put a shield up. And while I'm closing the distance, I'm going to fully charge heavy. I'm going to bash. I'm going to drop a Destro right here because I'm low on juice. Okay, I'm going to rotate around and try to get this Frost Atro down. Now I'm going to back up and use that trick I already showed you. So we got that there. I'm going to shield again. So two range, folks. I'm not going to play with it. And it's more of the same. So kind of go back here. We got the range coming in, and then we got the troll. So when these go down, we're going to spawn the next round. So let's see where the troll goes. We got lucky with the RNG. Okay, shield up first. One, two, three. Dodge, I'm going to Crescent. Boom. I want to get these things down. I don't want to die here. And got it. Okay. Now we're saving the ultimate for the exact same thing. I stay on this platform right here. And I want to get a good start on this next one. Come on, troll. Don't go over where I think you're going to go. Oh, of course it does. So round four is kind of the similar thing here. You're going to get these two guys here. And they hit really hard, but you, you can really avoid them quite easily. The thing that's going to kill you is having those two sitting there casting that effect along with the uh, the mage hitting you from the side. So you can just take those mages out quickly with an ultimate or just duking it down so, so, so much easier. Now you get a little break before the next round. So we're going to stay on this island if we can still. Take a deep breath. We're not going for a really high score. Here's the boss, right? 
So I'm going to put those things down, and let's try to eliminate as much crap as we can. So the boss is just sitting there taking damage. We're going to pull back, pull back, pull back, and then we're going to dodge through. Now the reason we did that is this little tater tot here. This is the one that's going to kill you. So now that it's down, we're just going to use what we've already done is kind of rotate around, hang out. As long as it stucks in the channel there, it's not going to kill you. So we got the troll down. We got boar down. And now we're on to the final boss. Final boss, save your Destro ultimate for the very last island, okay? Don't use it right away. So we're going to stay here. And we're going to pull it in different HP thresholds. The boss will glow red and rage and destroy the island and you rotate, right? So everyone pretty much knows this. But what you, the trick is, is to delete these ads and then get the boss really low so you can... Oh, I got stunned there. So you can basically just nuke it down on the last platform without any ads. That's the trick to make this really easy. See how the boss kind of enrages there? So we're going to pull back on this platform, and we should get a troll soon. So it's going to summon a little ad, and you kind of rotate so it doesn't stun you. See that rotation? We got a troll up. I got clobbered. No problem. I go my back bar and put a shield up. I'm going to put another shield up. I'm going to try to bash this thing. Oh, we're getting in trouble now. So we're going to sweeps. We're in panic mode. Sweep, 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 sweeps. Sweep, 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 sweeps. Yep. Panic mode. I'm a Templar. I'm not going to do any fancy rotations or nothing. There we go. We got out of it. Now we're going to bar swap or attempt to. This thing's nuking us down. So let's make sure we get it down and then we'll go to the next phase and beam it out. Okay. And rotate around so that doesn't stun you and kill you, which it almost did. Dodge because I got plenty of stam still. Bash. Now I'm getting low on stam, going back and shielding. Here we go. This is where we got to go big deeps. Potion up. All my buffs are up. Hold and block. Okay, purifying light up, now sweeps it. And beam, yep, here comes the ads, no problem. Ads aren't gonna be a problem because we're just gonna nuke it before the ads become an issue. It's a tough one, it's a real tough one. Just use your dodges, kind of get your head on a swivel. And as a Templar, if your all else fails, hit puncturing sweeps. That's why it's so strong to play a Templar as a beginner. All else fails, I hit my button and I can live. Moving on to the round, what are we at, six? The spiral shadow this is quite easy the only thing that really gets you killed here is uh stuns typically watch i say that and i'm probably gonna die but stuns are really what's gonna kind of kill you here and the specifically the night blade kind of ads will come in and stun you so what you're trying to do is prep the surround specifically so you put this thing here when i say prep it you're kind of deleting those uh spider things they, they blow up eliminate this totem and you leave them all unwrapped, but one. And when you hit the last one, it'll give you, I don't know, 10 seconds or so of just free damage on the bobs. That's really ideal when you're facing the final boss, because what you can do is kind of unwrap it at the very start and just completely kill it outright. It's very handy. This thing here, you can block cast a whole block and still cast your abilities that are not channeled, or you can just kind of dodge it and just whatever you're comfortable with. But you're gonna recognize these animations pretty quickly after doing this a few times. And then the timing will come down as you continue to practice it. It's just about practice and memorization. This is Mario Brothers in VMA. It's Mario Brothers. So just remembering where to jump, when to do it. Very, very simple after you've done it a lot of times. So we got more ads here. You're trying to eliminate the archer range ones if you can. And then I have this little thing. I'm going to bring it back here, the horror. And so we're going to just kill this horror on top of this. And now we have enough, um, all of them but one. So we're going to keep the little spider ones off of them if we can, like this guy. Keep that off of there. There we go. And now we're just kind of play this around until the very end. So this thing comes up. I'm blocking. So I have plenty of stamina. So you can block, cast that heavy and not die. And we're going to run over to the golden thing so we don't get deleted by these little spider ads. And that's basically it over rinse and repeat until the lurchers spawn. The lurchers, and I got a mini boss here coming up, but the lurchers are deceptive in their heavy attack. That's what I'd warn you, block here, is when you face them, and we're going to get a couple of them here in a second, is their heavy attack... It looks like it's eight meter range when it's actual in all actuality it's way longer so i typically just avoid it and i'm going to show you here real quick early what it looks like to unravel all these so here we go one two so this is what it looks like to unravel them that can be useful because you might need a little bit more damage when you're starting out especially on the mini bosses and so that's what it looks like so you can actually do it multiple times if you want 
But if you're playing this optimally, you'll be getting through these rounds so fast that you won't have time to do it. So that's why you kind of save it for um, the last one. But you can use it on some of the mini bosses. This one here specifically negates you. And so this is kind of a tricky one. So you can pull them back here. You can bash or interrupt that or not. But it will negate you at some point. Usually it's whenever I use an ultimate or try to, it will negate. So I'll pull back here. So I'm going to pull this thing to me. I'm going to put my ground effects. I'm just going to use an ultimate because I can't see it and I don't know what the heck it's doing. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to beam it. Now we got the spider ones coming, no problem. Um, and the change, and I'm just casting my um, casting my shield preemptively here, right? So don't be afraid to always cast your shield reactionary. Cast it preemptively. So if you know you're gonna take damage or it's likely, you cast it first. It only lasts six seconds, but sometimes that's enough to get you from getting peppered at the very beginning. So we're gonna pull back here, gonna kill this. I'm gonna pull right on top of this um, range block just in case because that uh, range is pretty deceptive on this guy so beaming out and we're on to the next one lurcher time so park up here first if you can your goal is try to delete everything uh, up front if you can I got stunned and that's what I was saying and will kill you that's the advantage of having 23,000 health um, and no, it's not going to be as good as your damage, but what it will do is allow you to get hit and not instantly vaporize. So we're going to pull a boss over here. There's a lot going on right now, so I'm just trying to get everything off the battlefield, take a deep breath, get out of that, get behind it for camel hunter's sake, and then beam it. And rotate, dodge. Nope, not getting hit today. I'm going to pull back. Now I'm going to apply my ground effects. One, two three my house down so i'm a little bit more tanky got some resources staying stay in my house and head on the swivel where are the little spider things where are the little spider things okay spider things aren't coming now we got two ledges or excuse me two lurchers and we got spider things so pull back no problem i'm gonna put purifying light on this is where the heavy attacks get nasty so you just kind of pull back your priority is to kill one of them and remember what's next round next round's the boss so we're gonna kill this thing and you see i have this horror right here that's what's going to make it the next round super easy. So let's try and see how this works. Pull Horver. Boss round. Three, two, one. Hammer down. One, two, three, four. And then Purifying Light. Now, this is not going to be nearly the damage uh, on my uh, live server uh, PC and 8 account where I have all the fancy gear. But it actually can. You can do this and have zero mechanics with the boss. So I'm going to tab target it here. I'm gonna put purifying light up. I'm gonna hit sweeps. I'm gonna backpedal. Now I got it right here. I'm gonna close the distance and do a crescent. Crescent, crescent, crescent. Boom, pull back again, no problem. And then rotate around. And so crescent, that morph of radiant and the crescent is enough just to finish it right out there and get almost zero mechanics. So pull back, delete it with the beam. Next up is round seven and we may or may not die here. This one is super RNG. It's very hard to do. Uh, because you'd have a lot of factors that are beyond your control, specifically the mushrooms. So we're going to take a deep breath and do our best that we can. A lot of people that message me struggle with the archers here. So if you're one of those people that struggles with the archers, what you want to do is kill it quickly. Great tip, Deltia. So I have melee folks coming at me. Why would I target them initially? If I, if I know where the boss or the, the, the archer spawns, don't target the melee. The melee will come to you, see? So you park over here. Got my ground effects down. I got purifying light down. I'm just taking healing. Easy money. So your goal is to memorize. Memorize the archers if you can where they spawn. And I haven't had, I don't have it all memorized anymore. But that will make it a lot easier when you kill these things. Okay, now we're going to get another mechanic, which is these platforms over here. So... You're going to have to kind of see the, the thing go green, your screen kind of go green, and that will alert you that one of these things is channeling. If you don't interrupt it and fast enough, it'll just nuke you down like that, see? So what you need to do is kind of rotate around, beam it out. Your number one priority is that. If you're really experienced, you can kind of bypass that, but we're not going to do that. Uh, so we're just going to absolutely kill this. We're going to stack it all here. Um, and then a couple mini bosses and or trolls will come out eventually. This one, it'll have a Wamasu eventually, and you'll save a Destro for that. So more of the same, melee, easy. Couple melee here. And got this little tater tot down, see, screen green. And troll, more of the same. So with the troll, rotate around. 
get out of melee range because it's you know it's all those girls online they don't like melee and beam it out next round more of the same you're gonna tunnel the archers if you know where they spawn and you don't want three of them up at once so try to get one of them down as fast as you can so a couple melee poles here and then we'll get to the archers and a couple other things okay melee is about done so we know what's gonna come up next okay so we're gonna get these down and we got a couple archers so let's try to get one down asap soon as this one comes down then we're gonna get the wamasu it's gonna sidestep that one so we're gonna pull this i'm gonna put my house down one and of course that thing spawns clear over there right so shield up shield up no problem purifying just in case and then i personally drop the house here because these things just always kill me so i'm gonna drop the house i'm gonna kind of run it run back i'm gonna rotate rotate now these are the ads that's gonna spawn you're gonna spawn little globes no problem i'm just pulling back that's how i deal with that close the distance get it caught in that animation pull back die next round we got archers this is the heavy archer one so you're gonna get to the last one it's gonna have three archers your goal is kill one as literally humanly possible as you can and it makes it much much easier if you sit around and wait around and dink around and they're all three up you're not gonna make it so i got one down so one two three i'm gonna use a, a shield right now so if all three of them hit me, the shield will absorb most of it. Okay, I got one I got one down. I'm going to go back to my shield. I got this thing coming up. No problem. I got hit with the poison. Spamming shield. Spamming shield. Spamming shield. No problem. Got it down. Okay, so now we'll get one more down. Ooh, deep breath, deep breath. We got this. Okay, so a lot happened there, but we just calmed down. Got our shield up. Just spam it over and over and over. Nothing wrong with just clicking over and over and over if it works. So it's two trolls. Try to get one of them down ASAP. They get stuck in this animation. Rotate to the side. Try to beam it out if you can. Of course, it doesn't die. So we're going to reapply our buffs, pull back, and we're just going to try to get one down. There we go. And after this is going to be boss round. So we're going to need a lot of magic, and we're going to need a header and a swivel because this one is where everyone pretty much dies. All right, got it down. Trolls morphing, so I'm going to hit a shield preemptively just so I don't insta-die. And we're gonna heavy attack it out. That way we get at magic for the next round. So head on a swivel. Look where these little mushrooms are. Look where they are, okay? The NPC is gonna come out at the least convenient time possible. So you do not wanna be by it, okay? This is not a race. So we're just gonna pull this back. See how it came out? I'm gonna put a Destro on both. Purifying, let's just nuke it straight out. Block and put a shield up. Not playing with it. It's gonna stun you here in a second, no problem. Okay, two adds are up. You just gotta kill one, and you can do these advanced positioning strategies and all this fancy stuff, but just kill one. Now, when it's in here, don't bash or interrupt it. And also, don't put up Ritual of Wreck, because it could kill it. So, uh, kill the ad, and then you're gonna be dead. Oops, see? A lot less of my own advice, so take it easy, take it slow. Now, put all the ground effects down. Head in a swivel. Where are the mushrooms? Where are the mushrooms? Because this NPC that we just absolutely love is going to come out when we know it's going to be here at the most inopportune time. I know this makes you dizzy. I'm sorry, but I'm going to rotate around. And the reason why is I want to find where that NPC is. See, I caught it early. Now I can just blow it up. Great. Now it's the more of the same. We're at 31%. So beam. Now I'm looking at my crescent sweep. I don't have a potion up. So I'm just going to rotate back pedal. I'm looking where the mushrooms are. See? And that's it. I'm just getting as far away from this bang as I can. Bang! We got her down. Hopefully we don't die now. Okay, more of the same memorization game. Um, what can I tell you about this is knowing where it spawns, and if you see a theme here, knowing where it spawns and front loading as much damage as you possibly can will make this so much easier. See? One thing dead. No counterplay. And right here, that and dead and we're gonna rotate around to the next phase okay potion up i'm trying to get one of them down and of course they cast a bunch of stuff so optimally dps wise you can just nuke it down with no counterplay but i don't have that much damage so i'm using um witchmen's and other sets and you know jacked up traits but you can see if you follow the mechanics that elder scrolls online you don't have to have all the fancy gear people spend more time worrying about the fancy gear than they do playing the game and getting better play the game get better at it the gear will come and your skill will increase but you got to know the mechanics of the game pull back here this lurcher is just deceptively disgusting so it, it's 
its attack for melee swiping is like 30 meters. It looks like it's eight, but it's not. So I, I just peel back and I don't play around with it because I've gotten hit, killed a million times. Oh, it's not even firing off. Great. So my abilities aren't working. Perfect. No problem. I'm just going to heavy attack it down. Park right over here to the east next. One spawn. Ritual of Rhett. And purifying. It's off balance. Rip it down. Okay. Same thing. Ritual. Spear. I'm going to put a shield up. So I'm taking a lot of pressure and I'm blocking. Okay. Down. Same thing. We got a caster over here. A couple casters. I'm going to go try to get one of them down right away. One of them straight down right away. Kind of kind of hang out in the middle here. Both of these spawn. And we're going to try to go over here. Take one of these out. And the boss, the mini boss, Lurcher Inferno, will do his little animation, pull back, put a shield up, spear, blockade, ritual, and I'm just gonna pull away and beam it out. Got her. More of the same here. We're gonna have spawns. Try to front load the damage. As soon as you see the portal, pull up and put your ground effects down. One, two, three, and sweet. Let's see, we got one down right away. Couldn't do anything. Now I'm turning and facing the melee. I don't want to get uppercutted here. See that? Not going to have that happen to me. Oh, pull around. Now, if you pull too far away, these folks will just crit rush you or stampede you or whatever. So you kind of just stack them on top and you're just making sure you don't get hit like that. Two of them that do that will kill you instantly, right? So it's a no-go. So just got to pay attention to that. Now, this one go right over here, right over here. We got to kill this little tater tot as soon as we can. Tater tot needs to die. Otherwise, it casts that, and you're just going to die. So I'm going to dodge out of here. My potion's up. We're going to kill these two things. I'm going to rip off a fully charged heavy because I'm low on juice. So there's no pressure to complete this quickly. Uh, dodge roll that because you saw it was about to swipe me. Purifying's up. We're at 34% health. No problem. We're just going to beam, and we're going to walk towards this side. This side here, there's going to be like five or six spawns right away. So it's really troublesome. So park right here on top and try to kill this one right away. So sweeps and my ability didn't fire off so I didn't get a blockade down. But we got one right away. And then as soon as I get one right away, they're going to start casting and channeling. So this is where a shield preemptively really helps and bashing. So I know they're going to cast and channel right away. If I don't have that much damage, I can just go right over on top of them and bash. Okay, two melee block here. I'm going to fully charge heavy because it's off balance, getting a bunch of resources back. If you don't know, off balance, you fully charge heavy, you're going to get double the resource sustain. So here comes a mini boss. It's very troublesome. It has a really nasty dot on you. Take your time. Kill the adds down first. Okay. After this, the boss is going to put down like a Dragonite banner. And it's going to put a nasty dot on us. This is it. So we're going to get out of that. We're going to fully charge heavy attack because we need resource sustain. And right when this boss is about to die, you want to park right on top of one of these things. Right on top of one of these totems. I'm rotating. Why you parking right on top of the totems is put your ground effects down. And now we're trying to nuke the boss in one go. So we're going to do that by this. Fully charge. And try to get these three of them down. Get that one down. Okay, we got this one. One, two. I don't know if I did it right, but we'll find out, won't we? So we get this over right here, and I got knocked back, of course, really bad. But you're trying to get it all down in one go. We're not going to be able to do it, it looks like, and it makes it much harder. So now we're going to have an ad that spawns since we didn't get it down. And we're going to have a bunch of different mechanics. It's not going to be fun. So your goal is, if you have enough damage, to get that all down. I don't. No problem. I'm going to rotate. And as soon as the ad spawns, if the ad spawns, we're going to nuke it down. Otherwise, it'll kill us. You see that portal over here? Here comes the ad. We're not going for speed. We're just going for a clear. Fully charge heavy. Get it down. Beam it. If you can. Okay, now we got this boss. So not a clear run, but if you don't have the damage, you're going to have to do that second uh, that second phase. And now to the final boss. Final boss round. And we're about 40, 45 minutes in. So not fast by any means, but slow and steady. Just plugging along. Um, final boss round. I went ahead and repaired. The Crim Guard is what gets people worked up, and uh, that's why we're playing a Magic Templar, because it's not that hard to deal with, even in this lackluster gear. So I'll show you kind of how to deal with them. 
Number one is, you're going to hear me keep on saying it, but knowing where they spawn and getting rid of them or straight away is your priority. So this one kind of introduces you to the Krem Guard and you can kind of get a good feel for how it's going to go. So we're going to use a potion here. Bam this one, try to get it down. And then after this, we got the spawn here. So one, two, three, and I'm going to put a shield up immediately, okay? So it's going to breath on me. And I have enough healing with Purifying Light, Ritual of Ret, and you can shield on top of that. So not too bad, actually, if you have all those things ready to go. If you don't, drop the ultimate. No problem. Park right here. More of the same. So I'm going to light this guy up. And both of them go down. That thing will stun you. You see they jumped on me. They wanted to jump on me. That stun can be an issue. So I'm going to shield preemptively here. Get the ghost. Shield up. The melees kind of come towards me and try to stun me. No problem. We know we got a friend coming next. Friend. I'm not talking about the friends at the bar. Okay, spectral explosion. Here we go. Oh, got it down. Park behind. Why? Camo hunter. So we got the three there. We got that down. And that kind of introduces you to the spectral explosion that you'll constantly get throughout the stage here. Um, and then the Ogrim thing here, you kind of pull back on this so you don't really want to be really that up close to it otherwise it'll channel and knock you back we have enough health to deal with it so as soon as i get some executes and it starts doing the the pound on the chest pull back and beam it spawn time here so i'm going to pull over here ground effects down i'm going to put a purifying light up i see that big channel to the right no problem sidestep it oh you, you're healing the creme guardy dirty dog all right i got you down I got 500 ultimates, so mini boss, I can go ahead and use an ultimate and clear it out if I want to. So same thing, we get stunned, but we have that purifying light down. That heal is really nice, so if we get stunned, we're still healing. And we're going to do a destiny here, spectral explosion. And so this is the one we're going to save an ultimate probably from here on out, unless we get in trouble. And you can always slot a defensive ultimate too. So, I mean, even Remembrance, hell, heck, I did it to learn how to complete Vatishram Hollows on Veteran, you know. So, if you need a defensive ultimate, feel free to slot it. Uh, abilities, thank you. Now I'm in trouble. So, we got three things up. We got the Krem Guard. I'm not going to panic here. I'm going to use Crescent Sweep. Crescent Sweep, and I'm hitting my Templar button. My Templar button sweeps. So, I got behind on DPS, and I got behind on killing the ads. No problem. Crescent Sweeps, I'll have to work towards getting a big ultimate next. Put our ground effects down, light attack. This one's kind of a goofy round, really. Um, you have to kind of work on preventing these things from filling up. Uh, I'm doing a poor job explaining it. It's going to uh, summon a Bone Colossus if you don't kill that. So you kind of have to move around killing those things, preventing them from going here. It's really just quite boring in a filler stage, if you will, in between what's next. So... That's pretty much all this round is, and uh, making sure you got an ultimate ready to go for the next one. Here's the Krem Guard and the, the hardest one to deal with. So the same thing, Purifying Light, no problem. Got you down. And now we have a Spectral Explosion, but you don't have to use it. So this one's quite easy to deal with, so I'm going to pull back just like that. Of course, I hit it anyways. And then I have, in my tool tip, I have 10 seconds left before I can use a Spectral Explosion. There's different advanced things you can do with it, but really you kind of want to save it for like something like this. So one, two, and hit it. So as soon as they spawn, it kind of gives you a nice little stun here. So you can kind of save it, and ideally you would use it for this dragon here, but we didn't time it right. So this thing is going to be tough. Um, since we don't have a whole lot of damage, and of course we're playing melee, because of course we are, we're a Templar, it's E-Block, and so I lose a lot of DPS there. It's going to knock you back and then do a bunch of annoying things, and then you're going to have a bunch of adds that spawn. If you struggle with this one, just basically you can go ahead and use an ultimate, but I'm going to try not to, so I'm going to pull back here, and really we got to get it down before all the adds show up or we're going to die. Got it down, so shield up preemptively here. Shield up preemptively. I'm going to use some Stam. I'm not going to get one shot by that mechanic. I'm going to rotate around. I'm going to go full Templar here. Full Templar. Fully charged since it's off balance. There we go. One, two, three. And now I catch my breath. The sigils are coming up. We're looking good. So if we have three before the final boss round, it's a good thing. So now we have two. The one. 
two, and next we have the final boss round. So I have a 500 stack of ultimate, uh, making sure I have good resource sustains. So I'm gonna do some fully charged heavies. I'm gonna close the distance, get to proc its effect, beam it out. Here we go, stack right on top in the middle. This is a difficult thing if you don't have a whole lot of damage. So we're gonna put channel focus down, longest buff to shortest. One, two, three, four. Bar swap, purifying, trying to get to 70%. So we can do a dodge here, dodge. We're at 85, so really low DPS since we're using all these starter sets, no problem. 75, and the Krem Guard, we got so low DPS, the Krem Guard showed up. This is where it's a big issue. So we're just gonna have to deal with the old school method. So pulling the Krem Guard, and beaming it out okay you don't want that to happen but if you have bad dps because you don't lack the gear or the champion points you can still do this just fine i'm um, just about dead on a whole block there we go got her down hit the portal here so purifying i'm going to use crescent from here on out because i don't have much dps i'm going to do a dodge whole block just in case i missed it channel focus down i'm pointing myself towards the boss so to see that, that thing over there, we gotta get in front of it. I'm on the wrong par. Boy, this is going real good up here. All right, and then watching, dodging, sweeps in, crescent out, potion up. Got another dodge coming and dodge. Okay, now we're gonna focus. So the thing's rotating around. And we can do it one of two ways. We'll probably go the slow way when we get down, or you can do the fast way and just burn it. But again, we don't have a whole lot of DPS, so we're gonna do slow and steady. Pop out of here, put a shield up straight away. I'm sprinting, 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 okay? Bash, interrupt that, and walk back to go ahead and get that. We got that puppy, and we're gonna do a dodge, dodge roll ski. And we're gonna work on getting the three stacks. That's our goal, three, sta three spirits. I'm shielding preemptively. This thing rotates, no problem. I'm gonna get this down because this is the slow way. We're doing the slow way. So the slow way is just taking a time, doing the mechanics. Now we have this, the spectral explosion. Let's wait for the Krem guard to show, and then we're gonna nuke it down together. Bang, here they are. Potion up, Crescent out, and sweeps it so you can kill both of them just in case the Krem guard gets through this. I'm gonna back up and beam it. Dodge. Come on. Boom, buddy. So we got trifecta, or we got trifecta. We got uh, no death, at least. Um, 554,000 score. Let's see what loot we got. I got a champion point. I got a Maelstrom Perfected Lightning Staff, and uh, oh, a Battle Axe. Maelstrom Perfected Battle Axe. Five new sets we got. Final score, 47 minutes, so a bit slow, but I paused and talked for a bit. But 554,000 score. Um, 15, uh, we, you know, didn't die here. And again, I'm using Withered Hand, five piece, Mother of Sorrow, um, training weapons, lightning, double lightning, and then champion points is 464. We got a bunch doing that, but this is a beginner walkthrough. So cut out some of the, the bits and pieces that you didn't need to necessarily watch. Um, but I think you probably got something out of this if you struggle. The mechanics are just reacting quickly and memorization really nothing special about me i've just done this plenty of times so hopefully you got something out of this because vma to this day is one of my favorite things to do i absolutely love it so get in there get those drops and uh good luck to you thanks for watching